Despite clinching six Serie A titles and five Coppa Italia trophies, Juventus has seen nearly 100 million euros in cash go out the door. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Pack your bags because this week we're jetting off to Italy to dissect the finances of the legendary old lady, Juventus. Let's rewind to 2013 when Juventus clinched their third consecutive Scudetto with a record-breaking 102 points. The winning streak didn't stop there, as the Bianconeri claimed six additional Serie A titles in a row. However, their European dreams were dashed as they fell short in the Champions League final on multiple occasions. In 2021, their historic nine-season streak ended with consecutive fourth-place finishes. The decade ended sourly, with the Juventus being docked 10 points for accounting irregularities, more on that later, and finishing 2023 in seventh place. Now let's turn our attention backstage. What unfolded behind the scenes? One thing to note is that Juventus includes income from transfer fees in their revenue. In all our other videos, we typically account for all transfer income and expenses in the profit and loss section, so we've adjusted accordingly. The Ancanaries headline in revenue experiences steady growth, reaching its peak in 2019. However, due to the impact of COVID-19 and a decline in performance, Revenue saw a dip with 2023 finishing at 438 million euros. What's behind this decline? Let's dissect it by revenue type. After peaking at over 70 million in 2019, they've since dropped to around 60. Let's examine the breakdown for 2019 and then compare it with 2023. We see a significant drop in season ticket sales, perhaps influenced by the team's subdued performance at home and in Europe, affecting matchday revenue. Ticket sales consistently account for around 15% of total revenue. The biggest revenue chunk comes from broadcasting rights, defined by Juve as audio-visual rights and media revenues. There's an even more substantial drop, with a decrease of around 50 million from 2019 to 2023. Let's delve into this. In 2019, there's almost a 50-50 split between domestic TV money and European competitions. However, by 2023, European revenue had significantly declined as Juventus fell into the Europa League. On the flip side, Juventus' commercial revenue has surged. It increased by over 40 million from 2019, helping offset the decline in other areas. Despite their historic league titles, revenue fluctuates significantly based on league position, averaging at 385 million euros. Now let's compare Juventus' revenue to that of Premier League clubs. In 2022, we're still awaiting the 23 numbers in England. We mapped out the revenue for all Premier League teams in our financial showdown video. Let's see where Juve stands when we convert their revenue to pounds. Oof, they're just outside the top six and quite a distance from the top earners in the Prem. So it's, a, it's a roller coaster in this emotional part. Now let's dive into the realm of profit. This is truly a tale of two halves. As Juventus stacked up league titles, profits soared until 2018, when the tide turned dramatically. By 2021, consecutive years of losses have escalated to over 200 million euros. Even during their league winning seasons, Juventus still experienced significant losses. However, the impact of fourth place finishes is enormous. Over the past decade, Juventus has been losing 45 million per year. What's happening? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Set that timer, grey out that revenue, and let's head straight to staff costs. We see wages steadily rising, peaking at the end of COVID, and then dropping dramatically in 2023. Juventus breaks down these costs for us. While straight salaries peaked in 2019, bonuses were much more prominent in 2021 and 2022, despite Juventus performing worse on the pitch. It's a complex situation to decipher, but during the COVID delays, the club agreed to waive and defer salaries to be later compensated with bonuses once order was restored on the pitch. 
Setting that aside, beyond this extended unwinding from COVID, wages have generally remained below 70% of revenues. So how much value did the Biancaneri get for their buck? In that record-setting season, each of those 102 points cost just 1.8 million euros. However, as performances declined on the pitch, the price of a point increased to 4.5 million. After staff costs though, the picture looked positive. Now let's talk about operating costs. These are also hefty. In fact, over 10 years, these expenses have more than doubled to over 150 million euros. Usually, we don't delve into this area in detail, but we have plenty of information in this case. First, let's break down the major categories in 2014 to understand what we're dealing with. Infrastructure costs are the most significant, covering stadium security, maintenance and cleaning expenses. Professional fees encompass everything from legal counsel, insurance and sports consultants to other club advisors. Logistics pertain to away day travel arrangements, including accommodation, transportation and meals. Player registrations include loan fees and everyone's favourite, agents fees. Inventory encompasses kits and supplies, both for team use and retail sales. And finally, other expenses encompasses everything else, representing a wide range of items. So how has this cost base evolved up to 2023? Professional fees have skyrocketed to over 30 million, while logistics have more than doubled. There have been substantial increases across the board, particularly in that other category. This increase is partly attributed to Juventus having to allocate funds for penalties and fees as part of the recent 10 million euro settlement. The operational size of the old lady is substantial. And accounting for these, we can already see the decline in profitability taking shape. Stadium and facilities expenses include the capitalised costs of long-term assets such as the Alliance Stadium. However, these expenses are relatively small in the grand scheme of things, so let's discuss transfer fees. Look at those costs over the last three years. Over 300 million expenses occurred during this period. Conversely, 2017 sees a hefty green profit, driven by the sale of Paul Pogba to Man United for over 100 million. This is the area of the profit and loss that Juve got got 10 points. So what did Juve get in trouble for? That requires delving deep into accounting territory, an area we usually spare our dear viewers from. However, it is an integral part of the story, so we'll cover Juve's transfer dealings in a bonus episode. It's worth exploring without derailing this money trail. For now, we can see the transfer cost put another massive dent in later year profitability. There we have it, Juve's decade started strong on the operating profit front, but has fallen away dramatically over the last three years. From 385 million in revenue, they've incurred an average loss of 45 million, 12 cents lost for every euro earned. As always, we're examining the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, mirrors the PL. Cash flows steadily until 2017. After that, things get dicier. However, those early years win out, with an average of 18 million brought in by the Biancaneri. Now, let's refocus on transfers. Apart from that Pogba deal in 2017, there's been net transfer spending every year with dramatic outflows in 2018 to 20. Over 10 years, Juventus has spent just under 700 million euros, averaging 70 million annually. Now, when we combine these amounts, things look promising initially. However, aside from 2018, the cash outflows have soared. In five out of the six years, Juventus spent over 100 million. Despite clinching six Serie A titles and five Coppa Italia trophies, Juventus has seen nearly 600 million euros in cash go out the door. On average, this amounts to 58 million per year. So who's footing this bill? Since 2018, there has been a surge in funding marked by several significant increases, totaling 800 million by 2023. What's intriguing is that net debt has only increased by about 130 million. So of the 800 million injected, 692 came from two capital raises. So what has transpired since then? Well, we're as up to date as possible now that we have the 2023 numbers. However, the Bianconeri are poised to return to the market, seeking an additional 200 million to potentially reverse the club's financial fortune. 
This may be in part due to yet another fine received, this time 20 million euros for financial fair play breaches. Will they succeed? Only time will tell. Until next time.